Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Fish Talk Live. Getting ready for a great show tonight. It's episode number 30. Got some great prizes to give away. We get 100 people on. If you guys help us share this out right now, we get 100 people on. We're going to go ahead and skip the spin to win, and we'll go straight to uh, giving away some fish from Ron Sickley. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Fish Talk Live. This is our first Wednesday version of Fish Talk Live, but we're super excited about what's going on. We got some great prizes and a great show. So we're getting ready to start here. Do your shares. Share this out in your groups. You know, when we get together and we share this stuff out, that allows us to build our audience and also allows us to skip the spin to win wheel. Please share this out. All right, let's do this. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Fish Talk Live. What's going on, everyone? Glad to see everybody on the show tonight. Looks like uh, everybody's filling up. Still got some time to share out. If you want to share this out, it helps us out. And let's put it in the groups and provide some content for people. Let's see if we can get those numbers jacked up a little bit, because I know Ron is itching to give away some free fish. So... Hey, if this is your first time on the show, uh, Fish Talk Live is a live multi-stream show that is streamed live to Facebook. It's also streamed live to Twitch and Periscope. It's also streamed live on Ron Demers' YouTube channel. And now we're officially uh, part of the beta testing program for LinkedIn, so we're also uh, streaming live to LinkedIn. Now, like I said, we're a live gamified show. Uh, the format is generally we talk about a topic, then we take live questions and answers, uh, and then we go ahead and give away some stuff. So every week um, we add new things and, and we bring on different people and different topics and, and things like that. And this week we are going to be having a great show. We're talking about substrate tonight. Every week I get a super chance, or uh, what I really like to do is introduce my good friend in Palm Beach, Florida. His name's Ron Demers. Now, Ron's been an African cichlid breeder for the last, um, I think it's 28 years, 26 years, somewhere in there. He'll all have him correct me in a second. <laughs> and uh, he breeds incredible fish. And uh, part of that is he, he also creates his own fish food from these years of experience. He's uh, adapted a formula that is just off the hook. All fish love it. All my fish do. And uh, he does that. He's also an awesome father. I got a chance to meet his family. Uh, shout out to his son, Hunter and Katie. And a shout out to his wife, Diane. So anyway, without further ado, that was kind of a long one. Here he comes, Mr. Ron Demers. <laughs> What's going on? What's a long one? I Thank know. You, my friend. Yeah. And that's just all love there, man. I appreciate it. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, hope you guys have had a good week so far. Hopefully, this uh, Wednesday show will go a little better than um, some of the Tuesday shows. And yeah. uh, looking forward to it. We got a great topic tonight, and uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. And Dave's going to do the topic tonight. I know you guys want to hear more of his voice, and you know yeah, he's good right. at everything else. So, you know, he's going to nail it. So, yeah actually how it pans out everyone is uh ron's been uh been a busy bee and when he's been a busy bee he kind of takes advantage of his health a little bit so was, uh, i said hey look this week let me just go do the research and let me put the topic together and take one of the things off your plate so so tonight uh i get the chance to talk about substrate 
Anyway, who we got on, Ron? We've got Bob uh, Medeiros, um, Rebecca Dunn, Jackie Moore, uh, Scott DeFour, Charlie Velinovsky. Charlie knows who he is. Charlie! <laughs> What's up, Charlie? <laughs> uh, shout out to James Smith, Robert Cox, Randy Tipton, Don James. Yeah, keep it going, Ron. I'm just doing, you know, I got my little things I got to do in the background. The uh, and our uh, and our one of our moderators, Matt Gin and Whiskey, James uh, Smith is watching. Isn't it awesome this little this tribe that we've been able to create every week? Every we all come together, oh, yeah. get to do the weird stuff in the chat, and just kind of hang out and talk about fish. It's really cool, Ron. I met some uh, I met some good friends. I mean, people that are you know I'm I'm meeting I'm meeting a couple along the way tomorrow. You know, just either customers or people watching the show, and before you know it, we're friends. It's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So uh, you've got a little bit of announcement, maybe. You t- were telling me yesterday, or you sent me some lists yesterday that made me drool. Oh, you're, yeah. you're letting the uh, cat out of the bag, so to speak. Yeah, well, you know, uh, update us a little bit. What's going on? I um, want to let you guys know that I'm, I'm going to kind of be expanding in some different types of fish. So no matter what you're looking for, and you and it's let's say it's not African or it's something that I do generally would never carry um hit me up ask um i'm gonna get a little more into that i have access to a resource that i just haven't been utilizing um very much over the last few years and um it's just too many too many nice cool new different fish you know even uh cichlids and tetras and goldfish and stingrays i mean the the access of stuff i have you know to now is pretty incredible yeah that's awesome. So you opened up to a new farm or uh, a new source that yeah, uh, awesome. that basically supplies most pet stores. It's just uh, it's always been too far to drive, um, you know, for me to go do it. But um, they got a great selection, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to pass that along to you guys. So nice. I'm looking forward to going next week because I'm going to be picking up some um, super red bristle nose, some fire some, eel, right? some fire reels <laughs> oh, that was, uh, those, yeah. those guys are cool man yeah. you just i get asked for them every once in a while it's just they're 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 so hard to find uh they're yeah. awesome in an african tank you know it's a, it's an eel you know as long yeah. as it won't fit in your mouth in their mouth you know it's a, it's black and red so mostly black with these red is it stripes i can't remember it's like chain link yeah on the body with it's stripes crazy. on the on the face and um you know it's really really cool looking fish and uh I've seen them before. I've seen them in, in friends' tanks. It's just um, I'm getting a whole bunch of them, and uh, I'm going to grow them out. I'm going to be getting uh, clown loaches, red-tailed tiger loaches, which are pretty rare, and then um, some Cynodonis catfish. Um, some of the stuff will be ready, you know, probably by mid-June for, nice. you know, for sale. So nice. I'm looking forward to it. I got a lot of people asking me for different things, and uh, I always try my best to – to find it for you guys um so i'm I'm gonna expand that nice that's awesome i i think uh so robert cox was asking about bitchers i think you were saying they're uh they're on my list yeah on the list that's awesome hey hey everybody so check this out we've got the star info set up so if you guys if this is your first show one of the things that's really cool about the show is um the background software that I use, it's called a software stack. And basically it's several softwares and then you write a little code, connect them and just how you use them. So we've got this massive information uh, service that we call our chat bot. It's, it's similar to a bot, but it's a little different. Anyway, if you type in star info right now into the chat, you'll open that up. It's a great way to also subscribe to the background or secret stuff we do on facebook uh, fish talk live uh i send out I'm, i didn't do it this week uh, but i i don't like to do it every week but uh what we do is we'll send out pro- special secret giveaway codes and things like that to put into the chat so if you haven't subscribed on star info yet do that it's really cool so i'm stoked today ron i got i just signed a deal for another show so i'm gonna 
producing a new show, a 12 month deal, 50 episodes for it's different market. It's not a fish show. It's, um, the cannabinoid oil, CBD live. It's going to be called. So nice. anyway, congratulations. yeah, thanks. Um, so that's going to be awesome. I'll probably get them to sponsor. here. <laughs> you probably got y'all. Y'all probably see it in a mid break at some point. Um, <laughs> Super awesome. Everybody's on. Let's go ahead and take a look. I never pulled it up, but let's see if we can do this by memory, Ron. You know how I'm always trying to encourage us to get away from our cheat sheets and stuff. Um, if you uh, turn on your notifications. So here, here's a few things going on, right? So uh, every week, if while you're uh, watching Fish Talk Live, you see here this little bell. Just click that. That turns a notification on. And so you don't have to remember when Fish Talk Live comes on. So if we change the day on you or whatnot, you'll just get a notification that Fish Talk Live is going live. So that's great. Um, let's see. What else? You can jump in here too, Ron. If <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, though. Uh, you want to give us a rundown on some uh, shout-outs on some groups? Can you do that by memory? <laughs> shout-out to yeah. uh, United Tanks of America. Uh, Absolutely. One of our moderators, great guy. Uh, they do a lot for veterans. Um, it's an uh, amazing group. Um, Ma Malawi Madness, you know, relatively new group. Uh, Roger, Roger yeah. Esperazzo, mm -hmm. um, great guy. Group's growing good. Um, kind of a same type of deal, you know. People get along, and no one's saying anything, you know, mean, no drama. Yeah. Uh, shout out to. Uh, Nathan Pate over at Crown Royalty Cichlids. Yeah. Um, can't forget my boy Gigi who won the FX6 um, a little over a week ago at uh, Cichlid Madness. Um, our moderators have some uh, of their groups, Southeast Fish Addicts with TJ, and then um, the West Coast Cichlid Exchange with uh, Isaac. Yeah, yeah. We also got uh, Paul Weiser who's up in the Northeast, and he's got the New England Cichlid Association. And speaking of the New England Cichlid Association, coming up in um, July is the ACA, American Cichlid Association Convention. That's in Cromwell, Connecticut. You can find that info by going to Star Info, and that if you're interested in attending that event. It's supposed to be really cool. There's about seven or eight high-level experts in the cichlid uh, community there's also a um, dinner at night there's uh, some contests and auction room and sales rooms and all that so it should be an awesome event check it out on star info uh, check that out you just put that right in the live chat um, some of the other things is you know ron cichlid's uh, clubhouse so we're always shouting out everyone else right ron <laughs> Uh, oh, yep, I would, but, we never mention ourselves. So. Yeah, the, the clubhouse is doing awesome. It's off the hook. There's some really good quality posting going on there. We're hitting over 2,700 people in that group. It's growing extremely fast. So if you're looking for a fish group on Facebook where there's no BS, no bullshit, no hate, no nothing, uh, just come with a, some good group of people. Look for Ron Demers Cichlid Clubhouse. So that's <laughs> That's out there. Um, I'm getting some messages. People are like, Wednesday? What's going on Wednesday? Hey, and we got 50 people. So that's good. I'm seeing 50. I'd like to see it get to 100. So um, maybe we just need all of us to do another real quick uh, share boost and share some out and say, you know, put some out there. And So what are we talking about tonight? Let's go ahead and look at our episode promo.
phone back. So. So what we're looking at here is a river that's in Ireland. You see the watermark there, underwaterireland.com. I just thought we could look at, you know, um, kind of a cool natural substrate there. All right, so we're back. I uh, appreciate everybody giving me this opportunity to talk about substrate tonight. Um, we're going to talk about kind of what it is and its function. Uh, we're going to dive into a little bit about the types of substrates and then hopefully share a few tips and tricks on how to deal with substrate. So um, this all kind of goes along with our biological, um, the chemical and mechanical filtration. Substrate's kind of part of that. So basically the definition of substrate is an underlying substance or layer the surface or the material on which organisms live grow and obtain their nourishment uh, brachiopods attached to the substrate um, by a stalk that's your plants that kind of thing uh, it's also the substance in which enzymes act a material which provides a surface on which something is deposited or inscribed so this is it doesn't necessarily have to be dirt or anything that's in the um, the, as far as the, the definition of substrate, um, integrated circuits are often um, printed on what they call optical disc substrates. So anyhow, um, what we're dealing with in the aquarium uh, bit hobby is mostly the rocks, the gravel, the sand, um, the, the, the porous dirt that you put in planted tanks and things like that. So what basically is the function of substrate? In the wild, um, like in that river, you notice there's not there, there's a lot of flow in rivers, but there's I mean there's not a filter in which we do this, and so the soil actually operates um, by the to produce the anaerobic processes that are required to filter out your ammonia and your nitrates and nitrites. So uh, substrates also function uh, for habitat and behavior. There's certain fish that need um, to have certain substrates, and uh, African cichlids are a perfect example of it. Uh, when male African cichlids want to breed and when they want to attract female um, fish, they'll build in the sand these large nests. And if you've never seen one in live, I mean, I, when I got to go and hang out with Ron, it was really cool because we we're just going down one of the canals and you can see down there with some of these cichlid building these. And they were about three foot uh, nests uh, for, for breeding, which is really cool. In Africa, they'll get much bigger. The Haps will build an eight foot wide, uh, basically looks like a crater on the moon uh, in which they are trying to attract a female. So obviously a beautiful nest um, gets in there and then they do their wiggle dance and get it on right <laughs> so anyhow um as part of the function of the uh, uh substrate as well substrate is really really important for plants because it holds them down there's a foothold for plants um you know we see this in different kind of aqua biomes and things like that another thing that uh substrate will do is also produce the oxygen in itself from the anaerobic kind of processes now so okay that's all great and in, in in the wild yes it's a big filter to help in filter and creating the anaerobic process basically the nitrogen cycle happens mostly in the wild in substrates either the muds or the rocks or whatnot in our aquarium it also has to do with our anaerobic processes. There's a lot of uh, beneficial bacteria that builds up in our um, substrate, uh, but it's not the main one because we've got our canisters and our uh, hang on the back filters or our sumps doing most of that bio load work. 
um, but you will find some of the process in the um, substrate as well. It's also for the habitat and behavior of our fish. So, if, you know, many of you are African cichlid um, keepers, and you'll notice that, you know, they're constantly building and pushing it around, re redecorating the tank, <laughs> doing what they do. And that's their natural behavior to do that. And they need that in order to be happy and healthy fish. They need to have that process. So having a bunch of just big boulders and glass on the bottom, yeah, it might serve its purpose and all that, but actually your African cichlids thrive better when there's a more of a sandy structure and things like that. Um, Ron's, you know, in the previous episodes, Ron's gone over the different types, uh, he, peacocks and haps and mbuna, and a lot, there's some um, haps that are just deep water and they never see a substrate at all, you know, so... I just wanted to throw that in there and uh, uh, and as well uh, any plants you have in your tank also need that substrate uh, for plant holds you know to to um, build out their root structures and things like that plus they pull nutrients out of there so um, yeah I just I don't want to run through it but um, I guess I guess our next uh, part to to think about here is um substrate and why it's important so in our aquariums there's two real important things it's part of the bio cycle as well the bio load it helps with the anaerobic um, processes um, but like i said most most of us either have a canister or a sump or hang on the back which handles most of the bio load but the one thing to be said about that is that you know if you take out your, all your substrate and you put in brand new substrate that hasn't been uh, cycled through, you will see a dip or an increase in that bio load. You'll see a, a, the, the, the beneficial bacteria dips down so the bio load's a little higher. You might see you know, a little bit of spike or you might see um, those things. So that's something to keep in mind, you know, especially if you have a really, really large tank and you're, you're kind of trading that stuff out. Um, as well, it's also important for the water chemistry. And the reason being is a lot of us use a uh, buffering type of substrate, crushed coral, corals, argonite sand, and those types of things. And it's one of the best ways to, cr to um, uh, maintain that buffer is to have really good buffered, uh, particularly argonite. And Ron's talked about this in previous um, episodes and things like that. But it's important in our, our biospheres for the buffer and for the pH. So basically I'm talking about pH. If we add high alkaline uh, type of limestones and argonites and things like that, it will buffer that pH. Um, it's also important, like I said, for the fish behavior. Um, we want to give them the natural kind of, you know, environments for themselves. Now, most all cichlids do do some sort of like uh play in the sand so to say or behaviors um african cichlids especially do um i know in my planted south american tank i have a um, type of substrate that is more for plants right but um and those fish don't aren't filtering through it as much although the little quarries love to do that um and then you know the other part about substrate that we need to talk about is the aesthetic part of it so our, our substrate aesthetically makes our tanks look really killer. So like if you're using black sanding blast, um, sandblasting, um, uh, I'll have to look at it here in a second. But you know what I'm saying. If you're using black sand, it can sometimes make your fish pop more, uh, white sand and things like that. So what do you think about all that, Ron? Am I, am I on track, buddy? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> You have any questions, Ron? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know more about. <laughs> Here we go. Mud. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Uh, I always liked the fact that David Bogart was talking about how he's like, just put a pinch of dirt in there. <laughs> that will increase your bio. Manure. Oh. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't know the nitrifying bacteria can go either way, you know, terrestrial or you yeah. know, uh, underwater. Yeah, yeah. Did I miss anything in this as far as defining and, and, you know, why it's important in functions in the substrate as far as, you know, I always refer to you. You're my expert, my uh, men um, mentor. Substrate, 
can also play a big part of um, your pH. You know, um, and that's that's one of the things for most of us African cichlid uh, uh, people are we we want to match the pH as close as we can to what we think it should be. You know, seven, eight, eight, eight point two, whatever, whatever you want it to be. And um, most substrates won't modify your pH uh, from your tap water. So aragonite and crushed coral and crushed shell and all these other products along those lines are pretty messy. But once you get them cleaned up uh, and rinsed out really well, they buffer your pH. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what most people look for. I think the two big things that they look for is one, you know, what do I want to see in there? Do I want little white ones? Do I want, you know, big marbles? I mean, you <laughs> with SpongeBob in there. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, talk a little bit about um, the different types of substrate. Um, I'm going to break it down a little bit. So you've got basically there's three types of substrates that you in the fish keeping hobby that you're going to want to be familiar with. There's the freshwater substrates. Uh, there's substrates that are more ideally suited for uh, marine and saltwater um, environments. And there's also a ton of substrates for if you're looking for planted um, tanks and things like that. So on the freshwater, and particularly for uh, African cichlids, um, the higher alkaline uh, the pH buffering um, stuff like Carib Sea has Argonite sand, there's crushed coral, um, and things like that. But you, you'll find also that people in their tanks will use pebbles, the uh, small pebbles. And then, of course, there's always the gravel. You got the different color gravels. Now, what is best? Well, you know, each each one has its own um, ideal usage. Obviously, those argonite sands are going to increase your uh, pH and get it closer to what African cichlids like, which is somewhere between 7.8 and 8.2, somewhere in there is a really good happy medium. Um, but like Ron teaches us, you know, we don't want to go on that pH roller coaster. So... Um, it all depends. And I know that like the water in Florida sometimes is a lot higher than it is from where I'm at. I'm at about seven. It comes out pretty neutral straight out. So I've got to figure out ways to kick that pH up and I get around 7.6 and I become happy. You know, <laughs> that's fine. You know, rather than put them, you know, on that roller coaster, um, just adding that, uh, pH buffer in there. Um, also, you know, African cichlids love sand too. And, you know, one of the things I found, and particularly early on, I don't know, I'm sure there's some people here that can contest to, or attest to that, uh, substrates can be expensive. You know, you can get in $24 for 20 pounds. That's pretty expensive. Uh, I find that uh, most of our do-it-yourself or some of these veterans that have been around, they understand the value of your money and all the, <laughs> the fish keeping hobby and uh, getting things like pool filter sand which is a really clean very um normalized not real fine sand which is a lot better for your aquariums some people use play sand um things like that i personally and i don't know ron you can chime in on this but i personally don't like play sand i think play sand gets sucked up in the filters too easily uh floats around uh and pool filter sand is is you know cheap like that yeah, um, it's it's. I'm not a fan of either one because it ends up in your all your impellers, your motors, and it ends up grinding them and uh, and shortening their life. Um, I got gravel sucked in a filter the other day, and it stopped working because of the design of the filter. Um, there's pool filter sand is kind of the same thing. It's a little bit heavier, but you got to be careful with that fine stuff. It will. Um, it will compact pretty tight and will create an anaerobic uh, situation where if you're gravel siphoning, you can release these pockets of gas. Um, and I've heard of people, I've heard, I've heard people tell me their, their, their situation and their fish died. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it depends what you want to see in there. The reality is, is you, you spent a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars getting this aquarium all set up and, you want nothing but the best, but you know when it comes to sand, you want the cheapest stuff there is. So, pool filter sand is good for that. But there's, 
there's other there's other stuff out there like dave said that you can get for you know less than a dollar a pound or you can you know uh, wait till they have his sales and pick up a bunch i should have set up a uh affiliate link for petco but um what i found and i'll give my honest review here uh, I like to get substrates if it costs me 50 cents a pound. That, to me, is ideal. I, I don't think you really need to spend more unless you are really looking you for a certain it. look. You know, you want that look of peppered uh, African cichlid sand or whatnot. But um, Petco has Carob Sea Argonite, which is four four ninety eight a pound so that for 10 pounds. And so that puts it at 49 cents. And I bought 140 pounds. I've done this twice. I bought, so I bought, what, I don't know, it's about 300 pounds of it. Uh, but each time I did, they sent me the 140 pounds for $6 shipping. <laughs> and I saw it in three days. So I was like, okay, this is, this is the one for me. And it has that buffer capability of, it, on the package, it says it will buffer it to 8.2. I never got it to go to 8.2, though. And you didn't even need to leave the house. It just showed right up. Yeah, exactly. No, no, carrying it into your cart, taking yep. the cart, emptying it into your car, yeah. and then carrying it from the car to the house. Yeah, yeah. That's worth the six bucks. Yeah. So let me give you my downside on that. It's great. Uh -oh. It's it's a great um, substrate. Um, here's the downside is that, and we're going to get into this in a little bit, um, but preparing substrate, you know, washing your sands and things like that. Uh, this particular Argonite from Carob Sea is a... Uh, so I've had I've used pool filter sand. I've had um, some other black sands, uh, those moon, the moon, black moon sands and things like that. Uh, this Argonite particularly uh, took forever to wash clear. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a tip and a trick, so how to how to do that. But anyway, that's a downside. The other downside is it will become exhausted as well. And if you're using substrate to buffer uh, your pH. You've got to, you know, occasionally, I mean, you can throw it in there. It'll probably last a year or so, but at occasionally at, you know, six months and a year, test your pH again and test your water coming out of the tap. Make sure those things are there and notice what the drop is. It's eventually going to drop and lower over time because it will get what they call exhausted um, planted substrates. And I was just going to talk about that, but some of those are. You know, you've got your fluval plant and shrimp. You got sea chem fluorite, carob sea echo complete. This is one I use. Um, these are substrates that are designed for plants. ADA aqua soil is a, is an incredible substrate as well as what I hear. Um, but your substrates are going to exhaust, and so what I mean by that is that there's they're they're providing some sort of extra benefit to your aquarium. Uh, the argonites and stuff for pH, the planted ones will have nutrients, uh, the trace elements and things like that, that the that plants will thrive in and grow faster. And they will exhaust as well. And so you kind of have to test your uh, uh, substrates um, to find out how that's going. Now, I don't know a test like pH test for plants. And I'm sure there is one. And if you're a plant expert, reach out to me. I'd love to learn this. Uh, when to know those are exhausted but my good buddy chris team with aquadariums he was um, asking me about my substrate and said well maybe they're exhausted and he said that the way you really tell is you just you're watching your planted tank and you're noticing when growths go and you know when you you know dose it you have some plant growth he says you know you'll notice that the plants will stop growing as fast and and all that and it, he said that's usually a good time to trade out the substrate so we just got done talking about the types of substrate we didn't talk about um, salt obviously the crushed corals and the argonite sands and live sands and all that kind of thing are your best bet um, for that you know we don't talk a whole lot about marine on the show and if if you guys want us to if you guys want us to start trying to build out a couple of episodes about marine touch down on some of the basics let us know you can put that in the chat or you can send us a message whatnot go to star info and start typing in there give us your thoughts um but anyway those are going to be your basics uh types of substrates and again as I always say every week, the show is designed to open up conversations in our group. So go ahead and open these conversations. Let's talk about if there's something I missed as far as, the, you know, that goes. Do um, you have anything to add on that like, as far as types of substrates? And you, you might, How am I doing, Ron? Am I doing all right? I'm doing good. Okay. Doing good. All right, good. 
I so mean, let, it's not a whole lot to talk about on Substrate. You know, you're just reiterating some stuff. You know, you know, people do know, and and some stuff they don't know. And uh, yeah, that was a great tip about you know getting it cheap, and it, it does exhaust. That's something we never talk about. Um, nobody knows. It just depends on what your load is, how much it's adjusting the pH. You know, you may get a few years, or you may get twenty years. I mean, uh, it, it just depends on your load, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So let's move this conversation into preparing substrates. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how, what we have to do there. So there are two types of substrates that you buy that, or two processes. You can either buy substrate that goes directly from the bag right into your aquarium, and usually you'll notice there's a it's, it's really wet. There's some water, some moisture in the in that particular kind of substrate. But most substrate ash you know, actually needs to be washed. Okay. So, um, and generally, you know, we all know this, anybody that has a tank has had to wash substrate. So, or sands or whatnot, but basically you wash it over and over and over in a bucket until it runs clear. And then you put it in your tank and you still wait two days until it gets clear <laughs> running through the filters. Um, a lot of us just use buckets, you know, put it in the bucket, tilt the bucket aside, put the hose on the bottom, let it circulate. Um, that can take forever and you can ask, actually get a kind of a false reading. This happens to people sometimes, not a reading, but a false kind of sense like, oh yeah, it's clean. And then you throw it in your tank and it's like cloudy and you can't see through it. It's like milk, right? Argonite will do that to you. Uh, so in it, it, you know, when you're washing 150 pounds of, of substrate, it's not a fun task. I'll tell you that. Um, so, um, so, you know, put, putting it in, in buckets and, and washing it out, washing it out thoroughly. You know, one of the cleaning hacks that I have for um, washing this, and I learned this from other people, and it's, not, it's pretty common. But if you take the low-level uh, bins, like storage bins, but they're low, the kind that fit underneath the bed, and you put that, uh, you put a pipe underneath, so you put like a three or four-inch pipe or anything that's round, coke bottle you can fill up a two liter coke bottle and put it on there you can rock it back and forth i always think i'm mining for gold <laughs> every time i came from the cold country in california so i'm always like it's like it reminds me of uh panning for gold i just visualized you doing that yeah exactly so and argonite like i said in particular that one brand is a bear i'm telling you 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 think you know when is this thing in a clear <laughs> <laughs> it just does so i just take it i rock it back and forth on that pipe and it allows the water to quickly spill out that's basically what you want is you want that that uh powdered in the dust of the substrate to get mixed up in the water and then pour out and the more you do that um obviously it will eventually get cleaner so that's one of the hacks there's other hacks as far as drilling holes into buckets and stuff like that and uh in the bottoms of buckets and using two buckets so the sand pours through and it pours out and all this i've watched them i've never done it i personally um just you know uh grin and bear it and just don't get get right out there with the hose and and get it done um so that's that there's the two bucket three bucket method you can look those things up on the um on youtube and things like that i don't want to get too much into it because like ron said this is a pretty basic conversation <laughs> i don't want to hit, hit it home with every detail but there is one aspect of dealing with um, substrate and that is what do we do with the old substrate or if we wash substrate and we have some extra and things like that um, storing substrate you do want particularly if it's been in the tank and already been through the anaerobic processes you want to be aware that if you store this and particularly it depends sort of a little bit on humidity and your location in the country too i know down in the lowest parts of alabama it's really important uh, but you will start growing some other kinds of bacteria in your substrate so if you've got extra and you put it in a breathable bucket which is basically you know just drilling some holes in the top or whatnot and you put it in your garage up on a shelf uh, the processes don't stop there, <laughs> you know, the, the, the things that are living in the substrate continue to do their thing. And there are some bacteria that, um, you know, and, you know, with, with insects and things like this that um, are harmful for the aquarium. So I just wanted to throw that out there as a tip or a trick is that if you've stored. And, uh, and it stinks. Yeah, yeah. 
So you if can you can never really dry the substrate all the way, so you kind of store it partially wet. Like well, it starts said. to rot. <laughs> That's why it stinks. Your bacteria yeah. die, and and others eat other. Oh god, it gets just nasty. It yeah, stinks bad. So using breathable buckets, being careful about bacteria growth, and bring and introducing bad bacteria. Uh, into your uh, aquarium something you want to be aware that could happen so you can clean it again by washing it but there you know you can also run it through some very hot water or boiling water or whatnot Um, I've done that actually I've actually had a whole bucket of substrate that came out of a tank that I broke down and then I wanted to use it in another tank well I didn't want to buy more substrate um, so I just put it in a large kettle the kind you cook crabs in and boiled the shit out of it and (laughs) <laughs> and use it again uh, because okay so here's the thing with uh with aquarium hobby is that you know we sometimes are there's a lot of variables and when one of the variables crashes we don't necessarily know it's that variable so we start guessing you know and it, particularly early fish keepers uh, or the newbies they're buying chemicals and throwing these chemicals in there to try to you know and it's really they didn't realize that hey they picked up this bacteria from the um substrate they got from their friend you know and they're thinking it's something else and all this stuff so um just to be sure you know that's what i did is i boiled it up um let's see so that's kind of storing substrate we talked a little bit about cleaning substrate um the the deal with cleaning substrate is that it doesn't have to be purely clean pure 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 it can still have you know some haze to it um your filters are going to um, go ahead and filter that out, that haze. And you may want to uh, take some of, if it, particularly if it's already a cycled filter, take some of those extra uh, media types, like either your mechanical, the, the heavy, or the, the large sponge, bio sponge, and out and just fill the whole thing with um, polyfill. <laughs> You know, put each compartment, several compartments of polyfill and let it run for two or three days like that and then put it, you know, back in there. That's one way to kind of clean it. Polyfill will clean out those really micro fibers of, from the um, sands and things like that. So um, substrate facts and hacks. Uh, how much calculator? Well, for most people. Uh, and I, I learned this from Ron. I appreciate that, Ron. It's about a pound per gallon. So if you have a 75-gallon tank, you want to. It's it's roughly about 80 pounds of, of substrate. Now, for the most part, and Ron touched on this, you want about an inch and a half to two inches of substrate. Um, when it starts getting bigger, that's when those more likely for some of those anaerobic pockets to develop, where these gases and you know stuff gets trapped in there and starts you know percolating. Uh, but you can go more like, uh, you know, one of my tanks has got about three and a half inches of substrate. Um, you know, it's, it, it can be more, it doesn't have to be one of the things about, uh, once it's in your tank is during your water changes, a really good healthy thing to do for your substrate is to run your fingers or, uh, run the vac and, and stir that stuff up. Yeah. It makes your, your tank cloudy. Um, but it's actually very healthy for releasing some of those. Um, and I always mispronounce this word. Help me with it, Ron. The diet, uh, it's the, sh- the poop and stuff. What do they call it? Detrius? Is that what it's Detrius, called? Yeah. Detrius. So it helps to release some of that into the water, which we're sucking out, right? So stir that stuff up. Get it all nasty. It helps. So that's, um, you know, obviously should be part of every water change. Or if you're too too water changes a week guy like myself i don't stir it up and (laughs) do a full glass clean and everything two times a week i just change water one time a week and then i'll do that glass cleaning and that substrate cleaning on the other day um so uh it's about so again the calculators are roughly about a pound per gallon uh or about one and a half to two inches of substrate on the bottom uh let's see what other stuff i got on here uh well pass on that creating your own substrate is it safe can you go out and just grab gravel out of the bottom of the river yeah you can uh you're gonna want to wash that completely and you're also going to want to be aware of the fact that there are other bacteria out there in the world that you don't necessarily want to introduce to 
uh, your tank. But if it's brand new and you're starting to cycle and do all of that, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. I've got just a little bit on the cheap alternative. So, and we kind of touched on that. Uh, that includes play sand, uh, pool sand. Those are both. I think pool sand. I could get. Uh, I think it was like. 50 pounds for $12 or something. Uh, blasting media is another one. So if you if you really want that black look and you don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, black diamond blasting media is great for that. Um, you can also, if you want higher levels of substrate, so let's say you want like hills or valleys. This is particularly in planted tanks, they, they'll, they'll do this. The, the, the right side of the tank is like six or eight inches high. Well, you don't want to buy another $30 of substrate to get it at that high. You can put things in there, uh, egg crates. You can stack up egg crates, things to take up some of that room. If you do that, though, you know, they're, again, they're, we want to be aware of the pockets that could possibly be, be in there. So you want to make it so that those are sealed or, or, or whatnot and, and just be aware of that. Look that stuff up on YouTube if that's your route and all that. So, um, I guess there's one thing I missed on the stirring of this and sifting and vacuuming is that, um, that will also help lower your nitrates. You'll get, if you get a lot of detritus, detritus, however you say that trapped in your substrate, uh, your nitrates will go through the roof. They, they'll literally just like, and so, um, yeah, that's one way to keep it down. So that's what I got for everybody. Uh, and basically, in conclusion, we, we talked about was uh, what is substrate, that medium in which things grow on, whether it's plants or the bacteria. Its function is to not only provide the aesthetic look and um, also it can help with pH, you know, particularly with African cichlids, if you get that type of substrate. Um, we talked about that there's different kinds of substrates for fresh water, salt water, and planted. Um, and then we talked a little bit about cleaning and tips and tricks. So I, hopefully you got something from today's episode. That's pretty much what I got. I'm going to bring Ron back or put us back on side by side and we'll go ahead and take a break and come back with some questions and answers. But before I do that, um, I want to let you add anything. If there was anything to add in there, Ron. No, you pretty much covered everything. Um, just make sure you rinse it out really, really well, um, regardless where you get it from. Um, some some of your substrate, like uh, fine sand, can actually float. So make sure none of that floats and get into your filters and stuff. But no, you touched on a little bit of everything. Well, there we go. So that, and again, like you know, I just want to say in the premise of this, uh, you know, these are conversation starters. These aren't thesis. You're not going to get your doctorate from watching Fish Talk Live. <laughs> Uh, these are places, <laughs> these are places to start, uh, learning about, uh, the aquarium hobby and some of the, the things, and it's good friendly, uh, reminders for some of the veterans out there, you know, all right, so let's go ahead and look at, let me find something here. Um, because I was doing all the talking, I haven't put this up, but let me go ahead and do that. Um, we love calling, calling, calling on the show and we want you to call in and if you call in you never know you could be rewarded for that so here's the graphic oh great let's see i don't know what happened with calling music but let's see maybe that there we go all right so you got a couple of phone numbers there uh both for the united states and canada go ahead and write that down Here's another thing. If you type in star info right now and you pull the chat bot up, there is a one touch button that you can push that will get you on the show from your mobile phone. So if you're watching this on mobile, that's the easiest way. Type star info into the chat right now and we'll get you on there. Let's hopefully we'll get some callers tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to um, a little bit of, we're going to take a break and come back with some questions and answers.
I didn't have All right, everyone, as you can see, there's uh, really cool groups on Facebook. So if one of those uh, is, looks interesting, just give a search and uh, join up. We'd love to have you. All right, let's bring back Ron. Let's bring back the live viewer chat. Let me go ahead and... Uh, we don't have any callers in, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull up some of these questions here. All right. That's that. Not a lot of questions either. Um, so, and I'll let you answer these questions, Ron, because you're my go-to mentor guy anyway. So um, all the information that I was spewing out, this all came from Ron anyway, you know. Hey, uh, Robert Reed would like to know if you need if you need to change out Crush Coral every so often. Yeah, um, as Dave mentioned, you know, check, uh, keep checking your pH uh, at least quarterly. Um, if, if, you know, or, or more often and, uh, see if it starts to drop off. Like I said, if your pH coming from the tap is 7.8 and you want it to be eight, your crushed coral is going to last forever. Um, as Dave said, you know, his pH is seven. So if you add, um, if you don't add enough, then it will get depleted quicker. So yeah. you do have to keep track of your pH. Yeah. Mine, because it's so low. I don't want to say crash, but lowered really fast. I'd say within six months, it was not giving me that full power. I, I just, what I did is I added another 30 pounds. Just kind of kept it going. Uh, Larry, D thanks a lot, Robert. We appreciate your um, questions. Mr. Larry Deskins is asking about regular sand. Uh, will that help with the pH, keeping the pH? Well, if you're running like a pool filter sand or play sand or something like that, you're, you're not going to be able to add anything to help your pH except buffers. And then, you know, you, then you're potentially chasing your pH. If you've got low pH and you're trying to get it higher, um, you just swap out your substrate or depending on what it looks like, you could add some aragonite or crushed shell for a, you know, kind of a unique mixture. Um, and you can, I mean, maybe 10 pounds of aragonite will, will bring it up, you know, two notches that you need. So it just depends on how much you put in there. Yeah. So we have another question, a little bit off topic question, and that's from Mr. John Zuber. What's up, John? How long would hormones last in potentially juiced fish? Well, hey, John, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I've seen it as far as three or four months, a um, couple weeks, depends on what they were given, how long they were given it, um, what size they are. Some of these larger fish in the four inch range that have been uh, hormoned for their whole life, um, it can wear on longer. Um, and some fish never lose their color at all. You know, I don't, nobody knows what the true percentage is, but just from listening to people out there, I think maybe 20% of juiced fish may keep their color. Yeah. You know, the, we, we probably should do an episode on what happens, why it's happening. You know, like I've always had that question like, well, yeah, hormone uh, steroid fish look great. You know, why not just feed them hormones all the time? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, obviously that, you know, just like in humans, you uh, prolonged st steroid use or, or hormone use uh, is not good for long-term um, longevity. For right? fish, it makes them infertile or um, it causes issues um, with um, not only fertility, but health. So yeah, it's not good stuff. Appreciate that comment, Mr. Zuber. Um, I'm going to, take one more question here and then we're going to the um, caller that just called in. Uh, Catlin Douglas has a great question. So appreciate this, Catlin. Does pool filter sand or silica sand contribute to diatoms which feed on silica? Yes, um, <laughs> they do. Yeah. So if you've ever had a brown algae, 
problem. Most brown algae comes from the diatoms and the, from that are feeding on the silica phosphates. So high phosphates and, and, and all of that, you know, and that's kind of one of the things I didn't touch on Ron, uh, with the marine substrates is, you know, those, the, the phosphates and, and various things that the saltwater environment is requires or needs, you know, are delivered through substrate as well. So. Uh, anything to contribute on that diatoms? I, I know I cut you off. Nope, you got it. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to go to a caller, and we'll come back to uh, Mr. Uh, Miguel Ramos has a question. Hey, I'm glad you're on, Miguel, because we have a surprise for you coming up here afterwards. Let's go ahead and take that caller. Um, all right. Hey, caller, welcome to Fish Talk Live. What's your name, your location, and do you have a question for Ron? Hey, Dave, how are you? It's Charlie V. Hey, hey what's up, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Yeah, good. Good. How are you, Charlie? Doing pretty well. You know, just getting adjusted to uh, living in Fort Lauderdale. You know, as you know, I moved down from Connecticut uh, okay. almost a month ago. And, uh, you know, I, I had 45 fish shipped down. I lost three or four in the process, so... Uh, not too bad. And uh, my question tonight is, um, with the aragonites, is the only benefit that it buffers the pH, you know, gets it up to the level that, that we're looking for? Or is there any other, like, beneficial components of the aragonites that, uh, that you know, would be of interest? Um, one of the benefits is um, – um, I lost for words. I had it on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Oh, it raises your hardness of your water. So um, if you're chasing your pH, even though you're not doing it on purpose, if you've got soft water, it's very hard to keep that higher pH. So um, aragonite will help do that as well. Um, so if, if I'm using like the cichlid salt, would that also cover, cover the hardness of the water or no? No, salts really don't do that no. that efficiently. Yeah, that... Uh, okay. Uh, general hardness and your um, your other one uh, yeah anything else on that Ron no no it's um, it basically for pH for your hardness and uh, I mean I like white I mean you know I like white sand in most of my tanks so yeah, yeah. hey it's good to hear your voice Charlie say your last name again so we can continue to try to get better at saying it <laughs> Sure, it's uh, it's Velinovsky. You Vel can call me Charlie V. That's fine. Charlie okay. V. There you go. There it is, Charlie V. We, yeah. We, we Ron, Ron, I'm Charlie gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be paying you a visit, Ron, in about a month. I'm having uh, 210 gallons set up next week. So, uh, That's so nice. Move Congrats. some of these fish that are displaced now into the bigger tank, and then come up and uh, grab some stuff from you. I saw that list this. Uh, be, that you uh, just happy, sent out a couple of days to, ago. Happy to see you again. So are yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. What substrate are you going to put in this new tank? So I'm going to use the uh, it's the Echo Complete, and it's called Ivory Coast. It's the Ivory Coast sand, which nice. is pretty sharp. It's got these brown speckles in it, so it's like it's like regular sand with like maybe twenty percent brown speckles. Pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one thing I forgot. I I, I knew I would like do this big long spiel and then forget something that. You know the the substrates we got to keep in mind that our fish are you know flash off them and stuff. So um, it's really sharp substrates. I mean, because you can put anything in there. You can got grass glass beads if you want if they're polished, right? And just throw them in there. Yeah. But anyway, so hey, it's good hearing from you, bro. Really appreciate it. It's good seeing you around. We thank you for calling in. Um, let's see. I would like to see if we can go ahead and. Um, send you something i let's send a, a ten dollar gift certificate so when you do get that going and all that we just appreciate the call uh, and say something simple no thanks guys all right great another great show guys really appreciate the time and effort you guys put into this awesome appreciate that charlie it means a lot my brother all right yeah take, absolutely all right take care bro thanks for calling man have a great hey, night take, take, take it easy guys thanks bye okay that that went okay Okay, okay. You know Joe Pesci, right? Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, so, <laughs> all right. Hey, let's check out, you know, I mentioned uh, Miguel Ramos. Let's see. His question here is, are blood worms good for Africans? If so, which is the best brand? Do you want to go ahead and 
Uh, yeah, I don't uh, recommend blood worms. If you do, maybe once a month, but it's just not worth supplementing their diet with them. It's just too rich and can cause too many issues. It's like if you eat too much steak, it just takes a long time to work it out of your system. That's how blood worms are. I don't recommend them. There's better sources of protein out there, earthworms, um, miso shrimp, krill. All right, so uh, we talked about um, Miguel Ramos, and the reason I mentioned that, and I got his name spelled wrong here, so hold on just one second. All right, there we go. Uh, Miguel's got the member video of the week. Check this out, Ron. Why don't you give us a commentary on this guy? Oh, of course, it didn't want to fire up the first time. Oh, because I got it off here. So here we go. User error. Hold on. Let's try it again. Oh, gosh. Here we go. I'm so sorry, everybody. Just bear with me one second. These things happen at the end of the world. It's not like Facebook's closing down your fish group. <laughs> Man, I was kind of in a conversation earlier about that. Um, with I just I'm not participating anymore. It's it, they're con they're convinced that it's uh it's real and it's closing down Facebook pages. Have you ever heard of that site called Snopes? <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Here's uh Miguel's uh tank. Go ahead and give us a rundown. Oh wow. Got a bunch of nice fish in there. Got OBs, uh John Stone Eye, um a BC ten. Looks like a Taiwan reef. Really nice. I like the uh I like the, the dark sand with those rocks. They yeah, all look yeah. happy. Yeah. And I'm not usually a big fan of artificial uh, decorations that are really colorful. Like, I, the, I like realistic art. But the, that color looks awesome. I mean, this is a really yeah, good, cool. really good job. Um, I was reading a little bit about his setup, and he's got some good gear on this tank as well. So... Uh, great video. We're doing uh, member videos of the week a little differently. There is a upload to what my P Cloud. It's just a service I use for storage. Um, so anybody that comes on with a member of the week, you have to upload it to me directly now. Um, there's a change in Facebook, and I can't pull the videos off of Facebook as well, as much anymore. So anyway, congratulations, Miguel, for being the video, member video of the week. Looks awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and see if there's any more questions. Let's bring that back. I um, just want to make sure we got everyone. Uh, Dylan Merrill, Ron, wants to know about uh, mealworms. I guess that's um, the same yeah, question. Yeah, your larger ones, you can feed them to them, but I would... I would make sure they were dead mealworms, not alive. But you got to be careful with um, small insects. You don't know if they've got those little hairs on them or those little like crickets and grasshoppers and stuff and ants. They have these little bristles on there. Uh, it's not good for the fish. It kind of tears up their throat. So um, mealworms should be fine. Um, you may even want to chop them up. Yeah. So here's the deal, everyone. I mean, you see it around and everything. Uh, there's two things that Ron is always saying that are best for your fish. One of them is water changes. So good, clean, healthy water and a good, clean source of food. That's why he makes his own food is that he's allowed, he can get tons of different uh, um, ingredients, mix them together, create this blend that is super good. So, I mean, if you're feeding a good food, and we're not going to mention the other ones, but if you're feeding Ron cichlids, and there's a few other ones that are out there that are extremely good foods as well. Ron's is dialed in, though. I can tell you that. His, I almost swore, but his shiosh is dialed in. The fish on Ron's food, uh, not only do they go nuts, but they're just like, it's just, you can see the difference. But anyway, and then feeding some good veggies, you know, like uh, real veggies, whether that's zucchini or your cucumbers or your watermelons. That's another thing that Ron advocates quite a bit. Um, I think we're ready to uh, run into the fish of the week. So tell, tell them about what we decided or you, you decided my suggestion uh, for the fish of the week this week. We're going to do, um, you know, kind of like uh, Mabuna May Madness. And um, we're going to be doing uh, Fish of the Week as Mabuna. So all Mabuna um, that I have in stock uh, will be 25% off until uh, the end of the week, basically. 
Yeah. And then, uh, I think I said it for Friday, eleven fifty nine p.m. Okay, so you so, so let me just reiterate this and put this into the the way it is. If you're looking for Ambuna, the next two days is the time to buy. He's not only got some really killer Ambuna, but they're twenty five percent off. Any of the Ambunas twenty five percent off. Let me run the mem. Oh, that's not that's the wrong one. Uh, Fish of the week right here. So this is just one of the several varieties he has in stock right now. This is Nicoma Lime. So as you can see, he's selling some very large uh, Ambuna, 25% off. Use the code FISH OF THE WEEK, and we'll go ahead and do it there. Um, I just wanted to pull this raffle image up. I wanted to say, and I'll pull us back up here. And you can say what you wanted to say, but it also was, you know, I was real involved in this this week. So um, thanks to everybody who were in the last three raffles. Those three raffles, the FX6, the Jumbo Box, and the Big Boxes, have helped provide the funds to keep Fish Talk Live running. Um, the, you know, we've, we've been talking to several different people about sponsoring these things, but sometimes those just don't happen in two or three weeks. So there's people that you have got to okay it, then you, you know, you're roughing out budgets and things like that. But you guys, the viewers... Uh, uh, funded Fish Talk Live. You funded all the giveaways, everything that Ron's going to give away today and everything before you've been able to do that. So thanks on the raffles. What was your thought on that? Oh, that's what I was going to say, basically, is I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys. The raffles sold out pretty quick. Um, we had some great prizes, had some um, awesome winners. Um, the the last raffle from Abuna, I just shipped those out today. Um just want to say thank you guys um as dave said that helps fund the show and provide uh you know more to you guys so yeah yeah. stay tuned for more so um we have this thing i want to throw out there this is uh where you guys can help us you can either do it by star info and then just start typing us a message if you want or put it in the chat we're thinking about doing a mega raffle right ron yeah yeah so mega. yeah june so not this week not next week but the next raffle uh, a mega raffle that includes like uh, a really killer filter made by Fluval, like a canister, like FX4 or something. And perhaps maybe that new system for our um, current, that Serene system. Serene's cool. Uh, really cool. I, I don't want to jump too far into current because uh, they're one of the people we're talking to. Uh, but they have the background light, they have the overhead light, and they have music that's set up for it. So it's not only really cool for your fish, but it's really cool for you, right? So, and maybe even six months of food for Ron. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, because we need some feedback, you know, are you guys ready for a mega raffle? Like, like this kind of raffle that's like, this is insane. I'm going to, you know, and then have maybe three people win. So you all get in, you put a bunch of spots on there. And then we draw three people, and the yeah, three times chance to win. Yeah, three times chance to win. You could win a FX4 current system and six months of food from Ron Cichlids. If you like that idea, please give us feedback right now, or type in star info or whatnot on that. You know what time it is, Ron? It's time to give something away. Did I get it right? Yes, sir. I did. What do I win? You win your own fish show. All right, everybody, this is how this goes, right? We have on the show what we call a spin to win wheel where we put prizes on these. Uh, we send out a hashtag. We're going to tell you what that is in a second. You're going to put that into the chat, and then we're going to use some special gaming software that we have on the back end to pull off uh, a couple of people to spin to win. Some of the prizes on there are free fish. There are uh, tons and tons of cool stuff. I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll let that go. For, but for right now, and I need to kind of look at what that is. Here. Is uh, let me. All right. So what we need is a hashtag, and that hashtag is Fish Talk Live. All one word, Fish Talk Live. I'm going to play this song right now, and. And during that time, here we go. So here we go. Fish Talk Live is the hashtag. Go ahead and put that in if you want to win some stuff. If you don't want to win some stuff, don't put that hashtag in because then you never know. You could be the one. Hey, uh, 
one of our moderators, Matt Gin and Whiskey, asked me to put on some uh, uh, Johnny Cash. <laughs> he had a request for music. And I don't know if you guys like the music in the show, but I, I do every week try to find more music. Unfortunately, we can't necessarily use Johnny Cash or Beatles or anything like that. We have to use licensed music, in which we do. Uh, but I thought a good old traditional country <laughs> would be good. So we still have some time. Put that the hashtag Fish Talk Live. Put it in there right now. Hashtag Fish Talk Live. Win some stuff. Come on now. Also take the time to uh, give a special shout out to our moderators, the hardest working moderators in the fish keeping hobby on social media by far. And and I'm just playing. I, I know you, there's tons of great moder- moderators on Facebook, but we love ours. And a uh, particular shout out to our good friend, Mr. TJ Hustetler, awesome guy. And he, what he does, particularly for the show, is he looks for the questions and feeds the questions. Okay. So we're about ready to close this up. I'm going to go ahead and pull up what we call our woo picker. And that's here. Not sure why it's not showing. Let's see here. There it is. Okay. So I need to refresh this, and it's going to show us right there. Uh, it wants me to sign in. Um, it's going to show the post and then we pick the post and pick the, the winner What's up Kiki. Can y'all hear my cat? She's demanding something. All right. So here's the post right here. Looks like a good, uh, good show. We only got 62 reactions. Let's go ahead and pick the one first one off of reaction. So I'm going to pick right now. I'm giving you guys a heads up. We'll see if that happens. I click on from reactions, whoever gave a like or an angry sign or a sad sign or whatnot. And that first person is uh, Fish Talk Live. Awesome. I just want, look, you say you never win, Ron. Look, you see that, right? Oh, I don't have it pulled up. There we go. Apologize, everyone. So this is off of reactions. It's giving you guys a little extra chance to throw that like in there. But it's, look, you you won, Ron. It says right there, Fish, Fish Talk Live. I'll send myself a prize. Yes, do that. I'll send you a prize, bro. What do you <laughs> That didn't sound good. <laughs> I'm kind of moving some stuff around here, everybody. So uh, bear with me. I got to lock that down. And then I'm going to pull. Why is that not moving? Video capture. It's not locked. Anyway, I'm right in the middle of the screen. All right, let's do that one more time. Fish Talk Live is not a winner. Uh, people that are reacting. Here we go right now. This is uh, our first spin to win winner. Uh, all right, Pearl Camacho. Congratulations. Okay, this is how this works, Pearl. I can't seem to move me. I'm stuck right in the middle. Um, this is how it works. You need to be on the show in order to spin and win. So if you're there, Pearl Camacho, calling Pearl Camacho, you need to say, I'm here in the chat so I know you're there. Um, let's go ahead and move on. I, and I, I need to get rid of me here. Let's see. There's that. Oh, I'm locked. That's why. Okay, so let's bring that down. Let's This is so crazy. All right. Anyway, so I'm gone. All right. So the next one we're going to do with the hashtag and we're going to go here. And the hashtag's not showing up right this second. So I need to um, clear this one time. Okay. So hold on, everybody. I didn't do it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now we, you can see here we have the hashtag, and I'm looking for Fish Talk Live. Hold on. All right. So here comes the winner for that, or the spin to win. We don't know which win yet. Okay. So hold on just one second here. Let me pull this off. When I cleared it. So these are some of the prizes that have been on the wheel. There's just a little, we'll just a little bit of lag here. Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, thank you for bearing with us. And again, it's 
something crazy is going on. Okay. So the other winner there is, uh, let's see, you probably can't see it fully behind me, is Mindy. Mindy Pulse. Yes, Mindy Pulse. So um, Mindy, so it's a girls' night tonight. So Mindy, you, you're going to spin the wind, uh, the wheel as well. Uh, I need to know that you're here. Hey, everybody, don't run off. There's a really cool video at the end of this credits, too. Don't run off too soon just because you weren't picked this time. All right, so I guess I can pull that off. All right, so let's go ahead and go straight to the wheel. We know that um, Pearl's here, so let's do this for Pearl. This whole thing got jacked. Hold on just a second. This is crazy. I apologize to everybody. Something happened here. And that's the way it goes. So we didn't drop very many frames tonight, but then we have this issue. So there we go. Just trying to get the wheel into focus for everybody. And uh, that's almost it. And that's it right there. All right. So here comes the wheel. And I'm going to refresh. This is for Pearl. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let Ron um, pick that. Um, so Yellow from 3 o'clock to... Seven o'clock. Okay, so there's the three o'clock yellow, and I'm going to rotate that around. There's six o'clock, and we're going to seven. Oh, and that's close to seven. We're going to do 630 because it's locked here. All right, so um, best of luck to you, Pearl. This is what you win. Here we go. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear a drum roll? Yeah. She won a gallon of the K1 media. Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. That's a super media. Um, we talked a little bit about it during the uh, biological show last week. Uh, really cool. So congratulations on that. Congratulations, uh, Pearl. Any confirmation on? Uh... Yes, Mindy's there. Okay, so let's do this for Mindy. I'm going to refresh here. I'll go ahead and pick the color. So I want the dark green at 10, but give me the, where do you want to put that? That's the big wind fish, large. See that Three there? O'clock. Let's pull that over to you. It's got to be 1 o'clock. I don't know what's okay. going on. It's stopped right there. So let's do this. It, th those really don't matter. It's just it, what it does is it keeps, puts another level of randomness. And uh, half pound of food. Congratulations, Mindy. Congratulations. Um. I want to do another one. Okay, so y'all didn't get to hear me, but uh, I was asking, uh, do you want to do it again, Ron, or what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to give more stuff away. All right, so those that still are here, I love it. I love doing this. I love like making people think that the show's over or they're not going to win anything and bring it back. This is the most awesome thing in the whole world. So we're going to go ahead and pick someone else. How do you want to do this? Let's just pick it off that hashtag again. Uh, fish talk live yeah or by reactions let's do um because let's do the hashtag because that's the one we called out the reaction okay. one all right so here's our third winner okay here's our third winner with chicken dinner and uh that's gonna be john zuber Oh, congrats, John. Yeah, awesome, John. Congratulations. Tell us that you're here. Uh, in that meantime, uh, Ron is is going up to South Carolina. Tell him about that. Well, I'm going tomorrow morning bright and early, so if you want fish, it's too late. But. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm yeah, because it's Wednesday, huh? Today's Wednesday. I usually have a buffer of one day, but oh yeah, I apologize. So let's but, tell uh, them about the service anyway. Too, so yeah, tell them about I'll, the service. So for you guys who are new or don't know, um, I have another home in South Carolina. So when I go up there every few weeks for a couple of days, um, I meet customers along the way on uh, by I ninety five, and I deliver fish. Um, Awesome. It saves you shipping. I, I get to meet you. Um, if you guys need anything, you just you know give me a couple of days heads up and uh, meet me along the highway. And uh, yeah, 
awesome day. awesome service I, I haven't heard a whole lot of too many people doing it like this but you know one of the biggest things in the fish keeping hobby is that uh it's tough to you know some of these shipping prices it you know can cost you 40 50 up to 100 dollars to ship fish so if you and ron's got the best fish around so if you you know next week know that he's going to be headed up the corridor up to uh, south carolina all right so did we get um john zuber still around i haven't seen him i don't know if anybody else has Hey John, we're gonna give oh, you. Oh, there he is! I got Ooh, it. He's okay. Up here. All right, we almost we almost nixed you, John. All right, so let me uh, refresh this wheel and this. We want to we we want to see you win some fish. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, you want to make it even more exciting? Put put another thing on there. Sure. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and nix this. Uh, let's put it down here. Let's nix the gallon K1 media and add one more big wind fish, large fish. All right, so that you have a little better chances now. We're going to apply that. Give us the color and the timing, or the, yeah, the color and the number. Um, pink, 12 o'clock. Yep. Back to 7 o'clock. Okay, let's go if I can spin this around properly. Okay, that's working. So we got that. Uh, best of luck to you, Mr. John Zuber. This is for you, buddy. You're a winner already. A new car. Another half pound of food. Okay. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, when you said new car, I was like, yeah, I think we did that Ford F-150 I'm gonna have to I have to post that video up again. I think the next one's a G5. Anybody want a jet? <laughs> I'd have love, to run a lot of raffles for that. I'd love to give that up. All right, so um, just to recap, I'll give Ron the final word. Um, we talked a little bit about substrates tonight. Again, it's not like we're trying to give you a master's of education degree in substrate, but hopefully we are able to touch on a few of those things. Uh, continue to uh, have this discussion both in the clubhouse and the clubhouse chats and all that. If you need to get a hold of us, type star info into the chat, uh, leave a message. You can find Ron also on Ron Cichlid's page. Look forward to some new uh, raffles into June. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you everybody for the opportunity to be able to be the presenter or the, you know, person that's teaching the topic today. I had a great time. The professor. Yeah, all right. Professor Gould. Yeah. Of sand. <laughs> sand. Of mud and dirt. Yeah. Did a good job, brother. All Appreciate right. the help. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us on a Wednesday. Um, it looks like it went over very, very well. And um, Wednesday uh, next week, we're doing the same thing. So um, I appreciate you guys as always. And um, stay tuned for. Uh, a little announcement in a couple of days for a sale coming up this weekend. Nice. Awesome. See you guys later. Yeah, that was a great show, Ron. Good job. See if anybody sticks around for this. <laughs> the great white shark both terrifies and fascinates us. But why haven't we seen a great white in an aquarium? I'm Bob from World 5 List. Here are three main reasons that you won't see a great white in an aquarium. Number three. They are crazy expensive. 
Money, the love of it being the root of all evil, and the preventer of things that you want to do because you can't afford it. Well, for institutions like aquariums, budget is absolutely something you have to think about all the time. You have to balance out what you think will bring in the customers while also making sure you don't go broke caring for the animals that are under your watch. Now, any species of shark is expensive to have, but when it comes to great whites, it's a whole different story. First off, believe it or not, great white sharks are actually protected creatures, which is kind of ironic because they're said to be one of the most dangerous things in the ocean, yet they need protecting from us. This is because even though they are feared, they're also hunted, mainly illegally, and thus precautions have to be set up to ensure that illegal capture and killing of great whites doesn't happen. To make a long story short, there's a lot of red tape that needs to be gone through in order to even think about getting a great white shark into an aquarium, and that's just the beginning. I'll touch on it a little bit later, but because of the size of a great white, you need to ensure that you have a big enough space to contain it. Since these creatures can grow very, very large, that's really hard to do, and yes, really expensive as well. And then you'll have to worry about cleaning it and making sure the water doesn't harm the shark and need to reinforce the glass around the cage to make sure it doesn't break. It all begins to add up and eventually you're going to be spending more money getting and actually caring for the shark than you are making money via the people who want to see it. There are very few aquariums in the world that would even have the budget to attempt such a feat and get a great white into their ranks. SeaWorld being one, of course. They were able to get one once, but it didn't exactly go the way they planned. The point is, despite the obvious allure, eh, there's a lot that needs to be done to I get a great that. white from the ocean into the aquarium. And trust me when I say that even if you manage to jump through every the loop sea and world to shark get it done, from the 70s. it never ends well. Number two, you can't offer them the food they need. I want you to picture a great white shark. In the they need raw and cichlid food, by the way. The, the, beyond monster monks, the kind that's like the, no. each pellet's the size of a two-liter bottle. White shark eats. The honest answer is whatever <laughs> they can get. And that makes it so they have quite a large palette of food they can have. Videos where they for example, they love to jump eat out seals of the water and trying sea, to lions, sea lions, but and not stuff. for the reasons you may think. Yeah. It's not that they're easy prey, though they do alert the sharks to their presence easily enough, but rather the fat on the seals and the sea lions is really appealing to sharks. It's not unlike why humans eat cows, deer, and other things, because we love our meat. The Great White is the same way with their meals as well. This guy's goofy. That being said, they also like to eat fish of various kinds and will even go after sea turtles. It just depends on where the sharks are and what they're able to hunt in the immediate area. Now, I want you to think about what creatures I mentioned here. What do they all have in common? If your answer was they're alive, you'd be correct. But why does that matter? <laughs> it's an idiot. Well, are you if you have to a great white shark you, in captivity, I can't hear. you I'm have just to feed breathing. it. But what do you feed it? It can't just go through fish pellets, and you can't feed it other animals in the aquarium. You need to feed it Ron Cichlid's shark munch. Because there are rules shark and regulations munch. about doing such things. <laughs> Stay tuned so for a new what's size the offering. Answer? Well, Two many aquariums have tried pellet. to feed dead fish to great whites, and it just doesn't work. Why not? Well, it all has to do with psychology. If you're a hunter and you relish in the <laughs> joy of hunting your own food, you have a natural instinct to try and get your kill with your own two hands, or by whatever means necessary. Most sharks are aggressive predators. I'm pretty sure this guy's just practicing kill, his voiceover skills. He doesn't know much about level. shark. Man. They want to take down prey in a vicious manner sometimes very epically as great whites will sometimes rocket out of the water grab their prey as they yeah, do that's cool. that's and then you're slam them about. down into the water so that they're stunned and can't escape the bite the point is they love to hunt and they love to eat live food and aquariums can't offer that so when they try to substitute it with things like dead fish the shark doesn't respond or will actually wait until they're starving to death Great white sharks actually hate previously killed prey, and this is a huge factor in why they can't be held in a cage. They have a primal instinct to go and hunt food, which they can't do inside of an aquarium.
Some aquariums, though, have tried to put the great whites in filled areas with fish it usually won't eat. And needless to say, it doesn't go well for the other fish. Thus, the shark is put into isolation. I also notice they keep showing pictures of other that. sharks, and they're talking and about great white. Like yeah. a great white isn't properly cared for, especially when it comes to food, it's not going to last long. And that brings me to the next most harrowing point on my list. Number one, they die in captivity. But before we get <laughs> like to number one, video? if you're enjoying this video, make sure you're subscribed <laughs> goes, and have your notifications. The number one reason they don't have it in aquariums is because they die in this one in the future. <laughs> now there are many mysteries when it comes to aquatic life. That much is known, but sometimes things can't be revealed about certain creatures until they're caught and put into captivity. Now, when you go to certain aquariums, you'll likely see sharks, but you won't see a great white shark because they literally cannot live in captivity. Because if you try to make them, they're going <laughs> to die. Bail. Now, she says, okay, guys, I'm die, I don't mean they'll die off eventually after a long period of time. It's actually quite the opposite. <laughs> they'll actually die yeah. rather quickly once they're put into a cage-like environment. For example, SeaWorld <laughs> yeah. once had a great white said, shark at their aquarium, and it got a whole lot of... <laughs> okay, everybody, I guess we're done with Fish Talk Live. We'll see you next week. Yeah, I kiboshed it. <laughs> I couldn't stand it either. Anyway, it was humorous enough. It was cool. All right.